How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is my top 10 maps for Farming Simulator 22. And today is Monday, October 16th, 2023. And this is my favorite maps as of this point in time of the recording. I will also be taking into account my original top 10 list from back in April of 2023. And some rules that I will apply to this top 10 list is that if a map has shown up in my previous top 10 list from uh, from April, I will not take those maps into account for this list. They will be on the uh, do not do not consider list for the top 10s. But if a map was in the honorable mention section of my original video, they can be eligible for the top 10s in this list. As I'm going through each of the top 10s for this list, I will take a kind of deep look into the starting farm to kind of show off what the starting farm is going to look like based on a brand new, uh, new farmer mode. And then lastly, I will give pros and cons for each map. Now, some maps may have cons, may have pros. Well, they'll all have pros, but I will be given kind of the, the, pluses and minuses for each one of these maps when I can come across them. And before we get into the top 10s of this list, I want to go ahead and list off some honorable mentions, starting with Close to Home by Alejandro, Crater Lake 22 by Poor Boy and Catalyzer Industries, Spruce Mountain Farms by Maps by Mako, Court Farm Country Park by Oxygen David. And the Farm Countryside by E.R. Shaba. And starting off on this list, we have number 10, Hills of Tuscany by Johnny X Pro. And as you can see here, this is your starting farm. You start out here on the driveway leading to the road. And this is an absolutely lovely starting farm. You can see just how you kind of walk in and there's already character with some trash piles kind of built up. You got some junk laying around here. You can delete these, which is very nice. You start out with your, your sleep trigger. You've got a vehicle tucked away here at your starting farm. A lot of your starting equipment right here in the main portion of the yard. You've got a well, you've got a good amount of starting uh, seed fertilizers, uh, manures, pallet forks, you got front end loaders, just pretty much everything that you need to start out very strong with a good starting farm. You got a nice cow barn here, as you can see, open up, tucked around the back side here. You do have a bale storage right here, a chicken coop, your silo which is a very unique silo. Your starting field right here. Inputs right there. Outputs around the side over here, which is what why I say it's unique. Some more storage over here. Some fertilizer silos. Pig barn just tucked away in here. You can open this door up and you can see there's the trigger right there. Sheep barn just tucked around the back side over here. And then you have this kind of split level on the very back side over here. Now back here you do have a biogas plant. You don't own it. You can purchase it though. So you have this right here. Got more junk. Just provides more character for the starting farm. Some more storage. Some diesel uh, silo right here. Repair trigger just right here. And some more storage and a lot more of your starting equipment just tucked away in the back here now starting off i'm going to start the pros and cons list and with the pros it's going to be a pretty universal uh understanding with one of the pros is basically beautiful landscapes and beautiful starting farms and or beautiful starting farms i should say so i'm going to say it probably a lot throughout this top 10 but as you can see this is a very beautiful starting farm just this farm itself but then we'll get later into the kind of landscape and terrain you have a very nice church that is on top of the hill just tucked right behind your farm and if we go ahead and just kind of hop in 
the truck here. We'll kind of make our way around and I'll show off some of the uh, some of the beauty that is this map. We'll come around this side here. So some of the pros on this one, like I said, the beauty, just the way that things look. You've got this beautiful kind of dirt, uh, is it like dirt or cobblestone? Like kind of cobblestone road. Um, you also get very, very good starting equipment on this map. And the reason for that is, is that not only do you own this portion of land here, but you also own this area over here and over here like you own good smittering of areas all around but you own a whole bunch of equipment for this which is grape harvesting equipment that's right so very very strong start because you get a ton of ton of good equipment so we take a look at some of our starting equipment i mean you can see we've got small tractors medium tractors harvesters grape technology and there is additional products here i'll go into a little bit more depth on that later uh, you got forklifts, forklifts, cars, trailers, some more grape technology, mulchers, plows, disc harrows, power harrows, subsoilers, uh, cedars. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. You get a very, very good starting for your starting equipment. You do have additional crops, as I mentioned before. You have additional crops such as alfalfa, rye, uh, spelt, triticle, mile, uh, compost, and white grapes. So you get a whole bunch of different products that you can kind of roll into the whole gameplay aspect. You know, more than just arables too. You get a whole different type of grape on this one. So you get to distinguish between the normal base game grapes, which are supposed to be red grapes, versus the white grapes that are exclusive to this map. It's very, very cool. And it's just a small little thing, but it just provides that little... Uh, kind of next level uh, experience. You know, especially if you're one who's big into the whole uh, vineyard process, the, the, the grape harvesting. So that is just next level. And like I said, the, the beauty of this map, you've got tons of hills and trains, lots of things that kind of break up the sight line, lots of different things to do on this map as well. You've got greenhouses there. You've got uh, these kind of planting greenhouses where you can grow and provide different types of agriculture you have built in olive groves with olive trees you have the olive shaker that's built into the map just so many different things that you can do in order to just farm and, and just have a good time on this map now moving on to the cons there are a lot of bugs and glitches on this map so some of the bugs and glitches that you will encounter that i have encountered because I, I will come out right out and say this. I'm currently in the middle of a Let's Play series on this map. Now, some of the glitches that I have run into is the si uh, I'm sorry, the uh, bale storage. I've had no problem when it comes to normal hay, straw, or anything like that. But I have been using the extractor uh sausage wrapper you know the one that makes the big long snake bales and as you unwrap those and load them into the storage it just goes horribly horribly wrong it doesn't like though that whole kind of setup so it basically glitches and then it eats some of your starting bales it'll actually spawn them into the ground and some of them will actually spawn through the bottom of the ground and just be lost forever so that's just something that i've come across it just doesn't necessarily work out the way that i would expect it to some other issues is when you buy sheep you have some sheep that are just floating around the entirety of the map specifically out in the middle of a field in the north uh, some other issues i've come across um, some funkiness with the gates at the shop. If you store items too close to the shop gates, such as fertilizers, seeds, things like that, the gates will not open. You know, thankfully there's two gates so you can get around. And it's just those kind of things that are just kind of weird and uh, funky. The other, th uh, 
kind of con that comes along with this map that really kind of stood out to me was the precision precision farming if you play with precision farming you will have an area of land that you purchase uh up here in the north so you own this area here this up here and for some reason precision farming starts you off with having this as a score and unfortunately because of this though if you don't make any progress you eventually start losing out on the score the score just starts to degrade further and further and you don't have any ability unless you create a field somewhere in here to be able to upgrade this and right here is an actual town so it's very difficult to actually get something in there where it's not um where it's actually going to affect the score in the positive direction but other than that this is a very very lovely map it and there's no bugs or glitches per se that really kind of dissuade from being able to play the map it, it's still plenty usable it's a, still a fine lovely example of what a top 10 map should be in my opinion number nine bucks county pa by tnt modding and here is the starting farm as you can see you get a fair bit of storage all around us here got a big silo to start out with some bale and pallet storage right in the corner there and starting out with just the beautiful beautiful landscape i mean you got the big wide open fields that are just ever expanding they are very irregular shaped fields which is very nice in my opinion got the very large uh green silos just tucked away in the back over there I mean, you've got just so much going for this map. This is just next level, very, very beautiful map. You got a very, very large grass field on the one side over here. You have animals tucked around here. You've got uh, chickens here, cows over here, but it's not just chickens and cows. That's right. This map has unique animals to it. So just like Bally Springs Farm, this one has been updated to include you have chicks, chickens, roosters, and ducklings. You also have your cows. You've got uh, calves as well. You've got so much on this map. You've got the sheep pen where you can actually go and have sheep, goats, the whole nine yards but you can see you have calves for males calves for females heifers cows you've got just all sorts of different stuff going on here it's very very nice i absolutely love it and there's some of the cows right there as they go walking by now you also get a ton of you not unique equipment but starting equipment you you get a ton of it as you can see here's some big semi truck with a bunch of trailers here you've got some great starting equipment just over in this shed over here you got more tucked away over here let's go ahead and just go and open this up right here look at this look at all this starting equipment it's a big john deere farm as you can see you got the big harvester several big tractors you got the big sprayer a couple of trailers a header the whole nine yards you got a ton a ton of stuff going on here now this is a very unique shaped farm if we take a look at the map oops wrong one still the wrong one there we go you start out up here you own this is all your starting farm here so this is the grass field here butting up right against the corn field against the sorghum field that surrounds your main sleep trigger house right there you have a large wheat field right here and again just very odd shapes it's just built into the landscape and then one last field here of corn right to the south of your starting farm so you get all of this and you get tons of product right off the bat and just got to put in the work and the effort so it's very very nice now i'm going to go ahead and start making my way around the map here and where i start talking about the pros and the cons and again starting out with the beautiful landscape around this map it is just absolutely stunning in some parts it's nearly breathtaking so we're just going to drive around to show that while we continue to discuss some of the other pros 
start starting with uh whoops there's a field right there uh well we already discussed the animal types now that also kind of leads to a slight con in the uh animals as well so yes we have the built-in pens and pastures that allow us to have the chicks and ducklings and cows and calves and goats and sheep and all that stuff it's it's fantastic absolutely love it but the problem is and there's your starting house right there with another little uh working area but the problem is is that you have to use all the starting pens and pastures that are pre-installed onto the map so that's a con and if you do use a map a, a pen and pasture that is not pre-installed onto the map well then your animals that you purchase and put into them are invisible you can't see them so that is a slight con on the map but all the animals the kind of base game animal pens and pastures are all pre-installed onto the map uh, some another con you can see here how this just kind of dead ends into a rock right there it'd be nice if it went into a tunnel or something but that's just a small kind of you know visual thing uh, some more pros large large fields uh, very very nice for this particular map because of their irregular shape it's going to take a while to do the work but again the kind of irregular shape just kind of makes it worth it to me and then the great starting equipment so as i showed you just a few moments ago you get tons of starting equipment that's going to make your life a whole lot easier especially on these larger fields uh some of the cons we're going to talk about here the uh as i mentioned the animals only work in the pre-installed pens and pastures and it is not the same barns as the fs19 version now this is kind of a uh a issue that I have regarding the the map itself and being a sort of legacy player I've played the FS 19 version of Bucks County and now we're on to the FS 22 version I got very spoiled with the FS 19 version and the way that the farm was laid out and looked and the layout is pretty much the same it's just the look and the aesthetics of it just are whoops are very different than what they were in last year's version now again the cons do not take away from this being a top 10 map being number nine on the list this is a fantastic job absolutely love this map and now that the most recent update has put out the kind of addition the add-on of all the uh, new animals that we found in Valley Springs it's just kicks it up to a whole nother level with this because it's just one of those where it just gives you something else to do and there's new procedures and how you take care of certain animals you have to have milk for your calves and you know all that stuff you can get the milk from your sheep or, or whatever the case may be like you get to do just so many different types of things on this map and you start out with, that's another pro, you start out with a fair, fairly good uh, set of production points. You get the biogas plant, you get several greenhouses. You know, you got all this stuff that you can really start kind of sinking your teeth into and doing work right off the bat. So yeah, when, uh, when everything's all said and done, that is why this one is at number nine. Number eight, Iowa Plains Farm by Celebuki. And here we have Iowa Plains Farm. This is your starting farm and as you can see it is expansive. It is a very large starting farm and it is very very nice. You start out by having your starting farm house right here with a sleep trigger right on the front. A little bit of uh, well your starting equipment here with the truck there. We've got a whole bunch of storage. We come through the kind of main gate here starting out with a repair trigger over here we have a bunch of storage right here a lot of our starting equipment tucked away in there we have our main silo system it is absolutely massive uh, root crop storage right here we have another bit of storage where we have our let's see there we go 
our harvester here very very large fields if you are a fan of large fields this is the map for you let me expand this this should kind of give you a scope if we're up in the top right hand corner there we have far farmlands i'm sorry fields number 10 7 and 11 and 11 is a grass field but seven is your big one which is right here it's all loaded with corn you're, you're going to have quite a bit of yield and quite a bit of harvest to do. Over across the street is another part of your starting farm. Right here you have a big pig pen, a big pig barn right here. It is absolutely massive inside. You got some more starting equipment and more storage tucked around on this side over here. A hayloft, a bunker silo. You got a manure pit for your cows. That's right, this is a cow barn, which is really, really cool. What's nice about this map as well is you have grass that you can harvest inside of the field here. So if you want to take advantage of the grass that's here, you certainly can do that. It's just tons of possibility, and the great thing is, is that because this is such a large farm, you actually have room to grow. You can knock down some of these buildings if you don't want them. If you don't want this as a storage, you can knock it down. You can put something else in its place. Or you can just, in general, expand. So if we pan out here, you can see there's tons of room right along the side here. Going all the way in the back side here that align this little starting field right here. So you've got tons of room to expand. It's very, very nice. Now let's go ahead and hop in the truck and we will... Kind of go over the pros and the cons as we drive around and look at the map now as i mentioned before pros you've got some beautiful beautiful landscape you've got very nice gentle sweeps and undulation just like a typical american map or anywhere typically america you will have just you know nice sweeping hills and undulations a lot of sightline breakage uh, for the most part, it's just very, very nice. You've got custom productions on this map. So you've got things like ketchup making and french fries and all sorts of different products that you can use that'll help you utilize all the products that you can grow. If you don't want to do potatoes or something like that, or you don't normally do it because there's really not much to do with them outside of growing and selling, well, you can use them to make french fries. You don't like to do oils and stuff like that? Well. Again, use them for french fries. You can uh, do all sorts of different kinds of products and you have all sorts of different uses for said products in the production chains. You also have custom, uh, on top of the custom productions, you have things like free land. That's right, free land. If we come over here, you will see land for sale. This is a placeables area right here. And it's half off. What you can do, though, is go to your map. You can purchase this whole section up here for $57,000. Super, super cheap. Okay, we start out with $100,000. We come here. If we highlight and go into the uh, build menu, we click on the decorations here and sell them for $57,000. Look at that. We are just shy of our $100,000 and we own all this property here. We got to smooth out a little bit of the train, but that's about it. And there's another place that's like this as well. We'll continue to kind of drive around and take a look at things. Some other uh, pros, like I mentioned before, it's a very large and functional farm because you have basically all the starting equipment you need to be able to do the the farm work you have everything you need to be able to just work and they're all good size strong equipment that you're not going to need to immediately replace there is stronger out there but you can do what you need to do right away now some negatives some cons about this map is the decorations whoops the decorations on this map will delete all other areas on the map so not the placeable areas but at the starting farm you will notice that there is a little bit of blurring in the trees that's because there's some decorations where the trees are located as well as uh other areas on the map that are just kind of decorated with uh just kind of painted on images kind of thing and you can highlight them just like we did at that uh, purchasable area and delete them well by doing this you not only delete all the extra trees that are at the starting farm you also delete a whole bunch of stuff 
all throughout the map and I also did a let's play series on this map as well and unfortunately didn't realize that at the time and deleted a whole bunch of area that I did not intend to do one other area that is kind of a negative in my opinion is that all the for the most part all the points of interest are very clustered it's got a small town on the map which is right here and that's where the majority of things happen is in this whole area here you've got one or two other areas where it's kind of spread out but for the most part the vast majority of your time is spent right here in the northwestern corner of the map and other than that though this is a fantastic map it has just got that kind of general really good midwestern kind of feel to it. it is just a very very nice map and you've got things like the grain mill where it's actually a water mill with a functional uh functional rotating mill so it's just one of those that just kind of adds to the uh environment and just makes it just again the details, the small details like that just really make a map just kind of pop and come alive. And you've got little water features, this river that's coming through the middle of the map here uh, that we're getting ready to go over. It's just, again, little things like this, the waterfalls, the running uh, water, just fantastic stuff. Very, very nice. Another negative that's about this map is there is one particular area that I found when doing my Let's Play where there was a kind of bug, quote unquote. I'll take you to it. If we come over here and we go across the railroad tracks, you'll see there's a bunch of trees all along the other side of the railroad tracks here. And those trees is hiding a kind of glitch. You can see if I can find it. Tuck there it is. Right back here. This tree right here. Just a little glitch. And again, all these are small negatives. Nothing to take away from the overall aesthetics and appeal of this map. That's why this one is considered number eight. Number seven, Galgenberg by Yogi. And this is Galgenberg, and this is what you get greeted with the moment you log into the game for the first time here on this map. And just look at that beautiful rolling hill view. It is just absolutely gorgeous. You got the whole lay of the land right there in front of you. The town just right there off to the side it is just, oh, just stunning this view. I absolutely love when I first logged into this map, when it first came out, this took my breath away. You have over there just a little bit of a waterfall just in the background. If you weren't paying attention, you wouldn't even notice it, but just mwah, chef's kiss. Absolutely love this look, but this isn't even your starting farm. This is your starting farm. You come walking in here and you have a greenhouse right here to meet you. Coming over here, chickens. You have productions right here at your starting farm built into this shed here. You have butter and, uh, what is it, butter and milk? Butter and cheese, yes, butter and cheese productions with a retractable input. So if this door is closed, that input does not function, which I think is just one little additional piece of, not information, but one additional piece of just detail. One, one additional detail that is just next level. I absolutely love it. You have to have the door open in order to actually do this. And you can see that little pipe that moves into place Look at that. So cool. Absolutely love it. Just a small detail that makes it just next level. You got your outputs for your production. A bunch more storage here with a work trigger right there. Re uh, repair trigger. Some more storage tucked away in here. Got your silo right there in the corner. You got a manure, uh, liquid manure slurry pit right there. Your cattle barn tucked away right in here and it's actually multiple cattle barns so over here you have this little pen this holding pen right here this is like your little calving area 
right here. And then right here, you have your main cattle barn right in here. So two cattle barns for the price of one. You got a couple of production points right here. Uh, let's see, you got another production point tucked away in here. You just, you got so much, it is so busy with so little. You have this uh, blower removals to where, again, it makes it to where if you don't have the blower active, it's all covered with the tarp, then you cannot use it as an input. Same thing around the side here. You got another blower as an input here. You've got another production out here for hay and straw. Or, I'm sorry, a silo for hay and straw. You have an output for your manure. And check this out. You can even activate steam off your manure. So as your cows are doing their business and this is loading up with all the manure, you can then turn this on and make it look like it's just creating steam. Just small little details like that just make a level or it makes a map next level in my opinion i absolutely adore it now we're going to start heading around and kind of taking in the sights because again beautiful views beautiful beautiful map is a common theme we're going to see throughout this entire top 10 list so one of the pros that is nice about this map but is also a negative in my opinion is there are, I think, eight starting farms or eight farms that can be purchased throughout the map, which if you're doing a kind of a multiple player uh, gaming, that, that's really nice. You have the ability to have each person have their own farm and kind of doing their own thing. You don't have to necessarily build anything out uh, from scratch. You can just kind of pick up and go kind of thing. Uh, another pro to this is that you have the choice of two separate maps one of them being a normal base game kind of ask base game kind of map where you have just everything that we're all used to available to you but then they have a secondary map that actually has a enhancement to the feeding mechanics that the uh, animals have which I'm in right now and that feeding mechanics will introduce things like scratch grains and uh let's see what else is in there uh doo -doo -doo -doo. oh it's because i don't have any animals actually uh any animals in there so it's not going to show me anything but uh yeah it's just the additional mechanics that are available to have uh to have for your cows and for your chicken just all that stuff it's just one little piece of additional uh detail that again just kicks it up to the next level and i absolutely love it when the map maker just kind of goes that one step beyond that one little you know bump beyond what's base and really kind of put some thought into things you know there's another little area tucked away right up here it's kind of like a sports complex and this I thought was really really cool so this is a field right here you can see here but it's a soccer field so as this grows this grows up with grass uh, let's see do I have this turned on for some? nope field info there we go you can see it's it's grass it's going to grow and eventually is going to make a area that you can mow and it just it looks fantastic it's just a cool little concept and i love that they actually added this in as a contract for you to do so you can kind of pretend you're a groundskeeper or something like that it just it offers just a cool little storyline and a cool little way of kind of enhancing the game just ever so slightly and i i absolutely love it when map makers do it it reminds me a lot of the kind of uh advancements that new lands the map new lands had made because in that one you're essentially a government worker you basically work for a county or municipality and your job is to uh you know keep you know the the highways all nice and clean and and all that stuff some other things that are really nice is that you have some additional uh products and productions that are available on this map that aren't available on any other maps so one thing that you can purchase on this or 
not purchase, but one thing you can do on this map that you can't necessarily do on any other map is the production of apples. You buy apple trees and they produce apples just like a greenhouse would. And again, you see all these little details. This huge construction area where they're filling in the piping right here. So they make this little trench and work around so you can make your way around everything. It's just, again, just little small details like that that just really kind of kick things off to the next level. I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, some negatives about this map. As we you saw, heading out to that first stretch of land, there was a, some kind of glitchiness to the road network to where it kind of flashes at you. Um, that's definitely a negative. And one that would certainly get annoying after uh, some time. There's also the uh, very, very large amount of downloads that are required for this map. Uh, when I installed this to do this kind of map, uh, favorite maps, I had to download, I think it was 16 plus additional mods just for this map, just for it to fire up. This is the apple grove, by the way. These are the apple trees that you can buy. You buy this property and you get access to apples. But yeah, 16 different mods in addition and that might include some mods that i've already downloaded just to have already so it it could be more than just those 16. but again you've got additional details like this here where you've just got all these little like markers and plinths that are around these little waiting areas there's a monument over in the uh southern portion of the map over in that direction and it's just little things like that just these little things that if you weren't out here you'd never see this if you and you, there's nothing that says that you have to see it you can just kind of ignore that it's even there but it's those little details those little things like this that just make a map something special and something unique and i absolutely love that about this map some other uh issues like i had mentioned before is the multiple farms if you're a player like myself who tends to on the most part play by themselves single player having multiple farms and 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 kind of the way that this particular map is set up is very overwhelming and very much a kind of a net negative when everything's all said and done because of the amount of space and the amount of real estate that these farms take up now unless they are farms with a specific purpose like you have certain animals at this farm and certain animals at that farm it makes it to where that's less of a negative and this one kind of does that there are some farms that are dedicated to just arables there's some that are dedicated to certain animals and so on and so forth so having them kind of set up in that realm is okay but at the same time it's still diversifying your farm too much and it can make the gameplay itself very overwhelming and very uh, very hard to keep up with once you cross a certain point there will eventually become a time where you're not able to do everything that you can do on your own and it just encourages you to play this style of map with many other people so and that might be just the way that the map is designed but with everything in its place and when everything's said and done i absolutely love this map and it is why this one is considered number seven number six the valley the old farm by black sheep modding and this is the iconic farm the valley the old farm and just right off the bat just absolutely gorgeous the running ivy just going all across the building and, and just pretty much all over the place it is just so stunning the amount of detail that is a part of these uh a part of this farm just absolutely love it the stonework on some of these sheds and uh it's just it's just amazing like look at all the detail that you can see here the big straw bale just kind of uh here you got the kind of brick and mortar just very very nice you got the brickwork on the inside the stonework here just fantastic all those ivies just growing up 
the side of the building. Oh, just absolutely love it. But again, you've got the iconic gates as we come into the main portion of the farm here. A couple of very nice bale storage into the hayloft here. I absolutely love this. You've got multiple bale storage. One and two right here that tucks everything away. You've got little buttons up top of here that allows you to retract. Whoops, if I can make it up. Come on. There we go. That allows you to retract the rails. So you can take out from there. You can put into there. So you can use the bale storage here, but you don't have to necessarily do it. It's just kind of an option you've got repair trigger just tucked away in here uh, you've got a fuel tank right here uh, sorry repair trigger is tucked away over here uh, fuel tanks over here you got your main silo here you've got a fully functional home tucked away in here which is very nice you got your chicken pasture here sheep pasture up on the upper deck level over here some more storage tucked around the back side here these bunker silos right here and here are just absolutely fantastic i absolutely love these because there's a feature on them that is just next level in my opinion so right here you have a little switch that lifts this hydraulic ramp and now you can back up and dump into the bunker silo how fantastic is that you got your cow barn right here the functional slurry pit right here a little bit more storage tucked away on top you have the bridge that leads to the rest of the hayloft right here they're just again all the details are just fantastic you have this little garden area where you can plant lettuce strawberries tomatoes base game stuff we're used to that but there's also red lettuce and melons that you can use to plant in here as well fantastic over here is the sheep barn like i had mentioned earlier on this upper deck portion tucked away in here more storage you have your starting field tucked away in the back over here and a little bit more storage another starting field right over here but you also have another portion. There's another farm right over here where you have your pigs. This is completely separate from the rest of them. So you have this gated area. You can open this up right here. And your pig barn. Just tucked away in here. Just, again, just really, really nice. The amount of details that you have on this map are just absolutely stunning. Some more storage areas tucked away in here. This storage area is actually really cool, really unique, because it's also got the kind of skylight here on top. So you can actually see it functioning as a actual skylight. I really do like that. Another starting field right over here. A little kind of drive-through area. So you can actually, you know, feed your pigs, come over here. Another functioning a slurry pit here, so the slurry level rises as more is here. You got this whole big old kind of roundabout area here that just allows you to drive through your pig barn and just come back into the main farm. It's just fantastic. So some of the pros, let me go and grab some equipment and we'll start driving around. So starting with the iconic starting farm, that is probably the biggest pro on this map. It is one of the most recognizable farm maps probably in all of farming simulator i know that's just my thoughts i think it's a very iconic i think and i think it's very recognizable to a great many of players uh let's see what else beautiful landscapes look at look at this just the sweeping lands just going across just fantastic so many things to break up the sight lines and line of sight and then you've got this again i think iconic just enter uh this part of the road network right here just how it dips all the way down into this giant valley and then you have to come and make your way back up to get to the other side just next level kind of stuff 
I absolutely love the huge dips in terrain, the, the kind of twists and turns along the way just to kind of make your way throughout and get to the main town area. Uh, let's see, what else? There are custom crops and productions. So some of the custom crops, we take a look at this. Uh, let's see, the growth can't, no, not here. That's what I was looking for. We have alfalfa. We can actually grow alfalfa as a additional grass type on this map, which is nice. But you also have custom productions. You have things like your potato, potato productions, which is uh, just here in town. Again, you've got this big, like tons of forestry around here. So you can kind of pick and choose what kind of farming you want to do. If you want to just do arables, you can do arables. If you want to do grass care, you can do grass care. If you want to do tree farming, tree cutting, you can do that as well. But right here is your potatoes, where you can make your uh, french fries. So you've got just all sorts of different things that you can do. You've got custom greenhouses, custom productions, just a lot of things that are going on in and around this area is just next level stuff. And again, now we get into the kind of the details of the map itself. So we pull into town here and you've got different oops, you got different areas that you can kind of drive around, pull into, you know, it just absolutely stunning right behind this wall here is a, a greenhouse area that you can purchase you got your main starting shop here which you can walk into you can stroll through you got a repair trigger that's tucked away inside yeah just so much stuff that's going on around here and then lastly uh, another pro is there's just a good mix of different things that you can do on this map like I was mentioning earlier you can do arables you can do uh, root crops just basic farming as we're as we're used to but you also have uh, forestry that you can do and there's tons and tons of forest areas so you can see here this whole middle portion of the map is just tons and tons of forest areas you got a little bit of forestry slivered right up here you got tons of grass fields all throughout the uh, the area here so if we bring up and do that see all these dark green areas these are all grass fields there's tons of grass work to be done um let's see what else another forest area here in the north you got another one right over here there's just lots and lots and lots of stuff going on another pro that i absolutely love about this map is the outer perimeter of the field or of the of the map itself it's all custom built so it actually goes with the map rather than it just being kind of stock and standard um to where you just got mountains in the background it really doesn't fit the terrain and landscape of the normal map kind of thing it just it you got some of those maps that will just kind of recycle the kind of basic map edging and it just doesn't look right it just really kind of makes the map just look wrong but this one we can get out to it real quick it actually just looks really really good um yeah we're starting to come up to it right over here but you can see just how it just makes the map continue to look like it's going on into that direction you can see the water area now even though this is a normal sized map it just looks like it just carries on and you have the bridge network in the background there you've got all this like i'm right at the border i can't go any further out but it just looks like it just continues and that's amazing i absolutely love this you got the wind effect on the water so it looks like the wind is just making the ripples and just pushing it away from the shoreline just fantastic again one more detail and this is to me a huge huge detail that when you can do things like this this really ties in that immersion that deep effect that you get with some of these maps and this one i think does one of the best jobs on making the immersion that much deeper and that much more realistic for the gameplay itself now there are some negatives some of those negative negatives are the rough terrain and what i mean by that is in the town we'll go go ahead and let's see let's go here in the town you will see there's all these little curbs right here that just line the the streets 
Now, if you're driving a piece of equipment, you're coming down the road and you're driving right up on the curb, all of a sudden, boom, you hit that curb and it's like the tires just grab and they want to just yank you into these buildings. And it gets very annoying very quickly. So you got to be very conscious, especially if you have any large equipment. You got to be very conscious about where the curb is in relation to where your tire's at because you hit that curb just right, you're just going to er, pow and right into something that is just going to be a, a huge pain and a big time annoyance. Another, and this one's a very large negative. It's honestly probably one of the largest negatives we've seen up until this point in the maps uh, top 10 list is this. In the fields, you have tons and tons of area. You can see it here, here, and here of open and available grass, what should be open and available grass for you to be able to utilize. You also have some here in your sheep pen. You got your sheep pen here, and there's this big chunk of area here that is just full of grass. But the problem is none of this grass, none of this kind of small grass here is harvestable. You can harvest this longer, taller grass here, but this stuff does nothing and the problem is that if you rip into the ground you actually make fields and you actually utilize the land the next time you save and come back in all this here all this kind of texture for grass the sprouts are back and you have the kind of feel that you made underneath this texture so it looks like the grass is just growing through dirt and it just looks horrendous it just looks terrible and yeah i unfortunately i learned this the hard way i learned this the very hard way because i did all this work i came through and i made fields in this area here where the cows roam because i wanted to be able to come in and cut grass it was a very e what i thought was going to be a very easy way to get a lot of grass very quickly and unfortunately i was proven wrong very very quickly it was an absolute nightmare hundreds of thousands of dollars to repair and kind of bring the map back to the previous state by painting all this grass texture back into these fields and even still there are areas along this fence and this border here because you actually don't own like the land right up into this area and even a little bit into the fields so there's chunks that were just had that missing texture underneath the grass and it just looked terrible so it got to a point where i would just start to do my best to avoid showing this area as much as i could but this is so much land that you have and you don't have any use for it other than just animals that's it and it's such a disappointment it was a big big letdown on this map but even with that being said this is a fantastic map i absolutely adore this map so much so that i did a big let's play series on it and absolutely loved it. it was one of the better let's play uh experiences that i've personally had and yeah i think that's why this one is at number six number five american falls by lancy boy and this is american falls and this map oh boy this was such a good map by lancy boy i i or not even was is such a good map by lancy boy i absolutely love this map for so many reasons first and foremost take a look in front of you again when you first come on to a map it really has to make a statement and i think this one does a fantastic job and for anybody who is just familiar with America and the kind of landscape that it can have in certain parts of this country. It just can be so breathtaking and just and very simple. It doesn't have to be huge mountain ranges. It doesn't have to be like anything in particular. But you kind of have a mixture of different elements here. You've got the mountains and the far distance in the back in the background. You've got the road that's just passing right by with the steady stream of traffic. You've got just this kind of little opening that's directly in front of you. This whole depth perception just kind of funnels and channels you into looking deeper and deeper and deeper into the distance. And it's just spectacular i love how this one just opens up so your starting farm you're looking at it you are 
right here. I, I mean, it's not even really a starting farm because you don't own anything in particular. You start here at this kind of sleep trigger, but you don't own any farmland. You own like businesses where businesses are located and you can kind of build them up per se, but you don't own anything because you're kind of here under the pretense of a story. So the story being very deeply tied to Stone Valley and it's actually very, very interesting. Uh, it's really kind of a cool story. So that's going to go into the pluses category. Uh, the starting farm, starting equipment really are not that much into effect on this one because you only own a truck. That's it. So no starting equipment, no starting farm. You're basically here to work. That's about it. Now you can eventually buy and, and build up into, you know, a farmer but you're here to work that's basically what you're here for and again there's a whole storyline behind it check out the mod hub and read the story because it has severe implications to stone valley and anybody who likes stone valley i think will really like this map as well so again beautiful landscape that's number one and it is an overarching kind of theme amongst all the maps the color palette that's something i haven't really mentioned much in the other maps up until this point but color palette is also incredibly incredibly important not getting that kind of overwhelming colors and and things that just kind of make a map feel cartoony this one does a really good job on just keeping everything understated very green and kind of lush and you've got the pines that are just kind of building up and, and all throughout the area you've got some of the oaks and stuff but it just really kind of got that northern kind of look and feel to it uh northern united states is how i kind of see it maybe even kind of midwestern ish kind of kind of vibes is kind of what i think uh let's see the unique fields that's a pro on this map so let's go ahead and start driving around and i will really kind of start illustrating what we've got going on here so the uniqueness of the field so again anybody who's familiar with stone valley will be more than familiar with how the fields kind of look in this particular map so you've got very much uneven, irregular shaped fields. They're not like just cookie cutter square kind of fields. They're very much, you know, going along with the terrain and the topography that's available. And you even have a lot of these runoffs that are within the fields that, that are supposed to kind of carry water and, and just kind of break up the fields themselves. You know, it's supposed to carry the water off the field and, and allow the crops to not be oversaturated. But that also makes for very interesting harvesting because there's oftentimes one field that's broken up into two or three separate segments that you have to start here and in a completely different portion of the field uh, that doesn't even touch the first portion that you were on. You know, you've got little, like this little detail right here, this little boulder that's just out in the middle of nowhere. I really like this because it just really kind of, again, just a detail. Any detail that's added to the map, added to any map, is just one more layer deeper into the immersion factor. And again, you got this little town-like area along the southern part of the map. It's kind of sparse on this portion of it but then it really kind of explodes as we continue to go a little bit further uh, towards the east here and you'll see kind of a uh, train tracks and it's just really kind of gets built up from here as you can see kind of propping up here but custom productions custom uh, custom crops whoops there's a thing there uh, custom crops custom productions and you've got crops such as got flax rye alfalfa and clover so you've got you know several additional uh crops that are available here you got custom uh, productions that are on this map in particular such as the seed production uh that's that's a big one right there we just passed by it it's just again 
just the landscape is just next level it is absolutely stunning in some areas again right there you got the mountains just in the background that just kind of get lost behind the trees and when you can have mountains that are just behind a tree line like that that is very very cool you got this unique looking pond area that's right across the street from this farm like this this pond area is really cool and you got a little sunken boat that's again just a little bit of detail a little bit of extra that's put into a little park that's right next to the uh, pond again you got the nice little farm here and you've got I think four farms that are available on this map and they're just really really nice like it's just every single farm has their own kind of personality to them and when everything's said and done just a fantastic map and as we're starting to get higher and higher or i should say lower and lower in the numbers you'll start to see that there's going to be less and less cons and unfortunately i have nothing really bad to say about this uh about this map this map i think is just an amazing example that what can be done in the world of farming simulator and yeah i think this is why this one is number five Number four, Carpathian Countryside by Mr. Hector. And this is Carpathian Countryside. And when I say that the starting farm is absolute next level, wow, just incredible, this starting farm. So let's go ahead and check that out real quick because it's not so much a starting farm as much as a, it's a cooperative. So it's a, a very large industrial farm very very much a large scale operation here you've got all these custom buildings you have a entrance way right here you actually have all this all of this is at your disposal to be able to use you have uh sleeping quarters upstairs it's essentially i think what you're supposed to be able to do is you are a employee of this particular farm you're not an owner per se i mean you could be theoretically but yeah you have just got so much stuff going on here you've got storage all over the place you've got repair triggers just tucked away all over you got another repair ramp here you got storage tons and tons and tons of storage because just how massive this is you've got herbicide and fertilizer uh, liquids that are sold or not sold held right here you can purchase them and put into it uh, actually that's liquid fertilizer but uh, yeah i mean there's just so much going on here so coming out to this side of the farm we're not gonna kind of walk around the entire area because it's just such a massive massive facility you've got horses right here you've got a uh, bale and pallet storage tucked away in here you've got your main silo right here and the silo has a kind of built-in production point so if we come into here you have a production point where you can have a pig food mixer and you have your inputs right here in this area. Your output right here is just all kind of integrated and built into this whole uh, landscape here. More starting equipment just tucked away over here. This I always thought was really, really cool. This is a set of bunker silos. Three bunkers uh, right here for you to make your silage. But you can come over here. Where's the button? That's the flash, or that's the lights. There's a button around here somewhere that's supposed to allow you to. Oh, there it is. Take off the roof. So you can have like a, a open air or you can have a closed. Very nice. Just again, small little details. You've got massive, massive cow barns, sheep barns, pig pastures, a whole nine yards. And look at this. This is the manure plate. This holds all the manure that all these bunker or all these uh, animal barns will, will output. 
So you got your your cow barn. I think actually this is your pig pasture right here, your pig barn. You've got a cow barn here, a cow barn in the back. You've got slurry tanks. Now take a look at this. On the side of these buildings, they're numbered. So you got number one right here on the side of the building. You've got these slurry tanks that are over here. That number one on the side of that building corresponds with the number one here. You got number three over here, which corresponds, I believe, to this building right here. This should be your pig barn. Yeah, there's number three right there. So you can kind of tell where all the slurry is being held. More storage over there and big enough to where you can expand and put down more stuff. Now let's go ahead and grab a truck and we'll start driving around first the farm so we kind of get the full breadth, the full scope of how large this particular farm is. And then we can go on and do the kind of positives, the pros and the cons. Again, horse barn tucked away right in here. Let's kind of go a little bit high level so we kind of get the scope. Like, look at this. This is absolutely massive, this starting farm. Again, you have the pig barn right here to the left, cow barn straight ahead. More slurry uh, points right there. Another cow barn tucked away in the back here. Like just there's so much stuff. You got another uh, bunker silo right there. Come back around this side. Just absolutely massive. Just incredible. The scope. Another bale and pallet storage right here. Now let's go ahead and pan back in. And again, what are we going to talk about on every single one of these maps? The the views. Just how gorgeous the terrain is. We're going to come out the back side over here. There we go. Now look at that. Just this gentle, gentle uh, sweep of the landscape. But it's enough to kind of make it... Uh, to, to kind of give that nice little sight line. And then you got a little dip right there. And we continue to head out in this direction. Just the terrain is very, very beautiful. The fields are very large, which means contract work, you're going to make money very quickly. Um, the colors and the color palette are very, very nice. Again, you do get some smattering of color. You, you do. But it's not enough to be like, whoa, very jarring, very off-putting. And it's still... A very nice sight to see you get these really cool kind of transitions into different terrains different uh, areas of the map tucked away back here you got this little grass field just tucked way back here in the middle of the woods um, yeah let's see what else so you got the beautiful terrain you got the the really cool unique large starting farm like I said I'm pretty sure it's a cooperative it is not intended to be like its own private farm area uh, you've got the heavy, heavy, heavy amount of details, especially around the production sites. That's why this map is over 800 megabytes to download. The download size is massive. We'll go into a facility here in just a little bit just to show off all those details. But again, you've got all the terrain. You've got these kind of bend in the road here isn't necessary to have the bend but it is there and it's just really nice again you got the really nice sweeping of the terrain it's not jarring to where it's just all of a sudden va boom and it's a big hillside or anything like that it's just a nice gentle sweep you're not going to have to really worry too much about you know the equipment per se being underpowered and having to really kind of bulk it up because of that you're going to want to be big heavy equipment because it's big big land it's a lot of uh, land to take care of but look at this this is just somebody's backyard it's nothing in particular but you got a tractor just kind of built in here a nice little garden in the back like look at all the details that are just right here in this one yard and it has nothing to do with anything necessarily and then you come over here this is one of the uh, production points this is I believe the dairy right here yeah dairy and look at all the details you got the plant work 
in here you've got the little grass area and then tucked around the back look at all this detail you've got boxes you've got crates you've got pallets you've got forklifts and at almost every single one of the production sites you have a usable forklift at almost every single one of them you know a lot of them are just base game kind of you know production sites nothing too spectacular in that but because of all the details that are spread out in throughout all the production you just distracts you away from it being base game it really does like it's just so much detail that you're like oh hey i just realized that's like something we've seen many times over but that's okay because it's fine in my opinion to use those base game productions especially if you're going to put in the effort to put in all this detail and look at this all this detail and just this little tiny area it is massive you got parked cars on the curbs it's just it's fantastic and there's a reason why it's 800 megabytes to download and i'm okay with that i'm okay with this being so large because you get so much out of it like look at this area it's just insane look at this this is the grain mill right here again we've seen this grain mill many times you got the bakery right here next to it we're used to seeing these but because of all this detail, the bicycles, the totes, the, the crates, the, the milk containers, like all this detail. And again, another forklift that you're able to use at almost every single one of these sites. You got smoke from rising out of chimneys. It's just next level kind of stuff. And I absolutely love it. Just, yeah, just absolutely fantastic. Let's see what else. Large, uh, the large fields because they're so large, they give you a heavy, heavy price when you're doing contracts. So check this out. If you're doing a contract on harvesting contract on field 20, we take a look at the map in field 20. It's right there, right dead center of the map. It's a pretty big size field, but to harvest it, it's going to be almost 20 grand. 18,000. I mean. 18 grand for one contract that's huge that is absolutely massive and now we kind of come out of that kind of built up area and now we're at another farm so there's several farms that are dotted around the map that you can purchase use build up you don't have to have that big huge starting cooperative there you can start with your own farm and you're in kind of go at it a smaller pace but again you've got the very very nice landscape the terrain is just very subtle very kind of you know, understated, but it's still just gorgeous in all directions. You look around, and even though most of the time I say what I really like in a map is the kind of breaking of the sight lines, even though there's nothing to really break up the sight lines because these are such massive fields, the sweep of the terrain within the fields is enough to break up that kind of sight line and doesn't make it to where it's just flatness it's not just boring kind of thing again you've got the biogas plant that's right here and look at this it is just it's packed full of stuff there's so much stuff going on there it makes it look like it's lived in it makes it look like there's something going on you know and then you come up to the east side of the map and you go north to south this is where a lot of the kind of big time traffic takes place because you've got all this stuff that's built up here and you got your shop your main shop coming up on this side of the map i mean again look at all the trucks and the and the vehicles and all this this is a lot of stuff just kind of built up and it just really adds to that immersion factor that i keep talking about now some negatives on this map is because of the the largeness of the fields it's going to take a very very long time to do any of the contracts especially if you have smaller equipment to start out with it's going to take a while to do anything um and another thing you can't purchase all the land and that to me i i really don't like it when maps don't allow you to purchase all the map because then there's going to be some area especially if it's a good chunk now this one it's not that bad there's yes there's some areas that you cannot purchase but 
it's not that big of a deal because a lot of it's like the built up areas, the the kind of uh, shops and and the big town area right here. So you can't modify and make changes in those areas. I don't like it. That's still a, a personal thing for me. I don't care for not being able to purchase and do things in these areas because there's still things that you could potentially do. You can add generators and, and things like that and tuck them inside of the kind of densely populated areas that will still allow you to reap the benefit of the generator without necessarily having to see it. So it's just one of those things that, you know, it's a small thing, but it's something that, that really kind of weighs heavy on me. And I think, yeah, that's, I think that's why this is number four. There's a lot going for this map and I really, really do like it. Again, look at just the scope as I pull out here, just the, this is massive, an absolutely massive farm. And again, all the details, you got all the parked cars, you got the horse stables right here in the front. You know, so when you put horses in here, there's just so much activity going on. And yeah, and, and then we get up here. We'll, we'll go up here just a little ways to the kind of main town area that's just south of your, you know, starting farm, quote unquote. But here, look at all the detail that's going on here. Just so much stuff that's going on. It's just fantastic. I absolutely love this map. This is a very, very good map. But again, that is why this is number four. Number three, Bally Springs by Irish Connor, Glengar Boy, Erie Agri Modding. And here we have Bally Springs. And again, look at that view. Just, oh, so beautiful. You got the old stone wall fencing right there. Just again next level kind of stuff i absolutely love the kind of detail work that is in this starting farm just love it love it love it so you got your sleep trigger right here come around the corner over in this side here got this kind of driveway that leads to your main starting farm and for those people who are not into small farms this one might not be for you but it, it's pretty tight you know, you've got your storage right around here for some of your bigger equipment like your harvester, some more storage here. And again, I mean, you just got so much stuff that's going on here in such small little tight area. It's really incredible. But this map, again, next level on stuff. This map was the first to introduce us to new animals being available for all platforms so these are all heifers which is not quite an adult or wait is it that they're not quite an adult hold on no they're not quite an adult they're kind of the mid-range uh cow then you have the actual cow itself which is the full-blown adult but then you have calves now let's continue to kind of walk around and check things out Got a slurry tank back here. Got all sorts of little nooks and crannies. You got your actual uh, silo right back here. So you got your heifers up front here. If we run out the back side here, let's go hop over here and go down this little path to the back side. Because this, this is where it gets kicked up to the next level. Because this is the first map that allowed you to actually have custom animals on it. Tucked away in the back here. Look at this. You got calves. You got little, little itty bitty babies. Look at the baby. Oh, it's so cute. Gotta love it. Just absolutely love it. So it's not just cows that you have the range of. You've got, you know, like I said, you've got females which is calves heifers and cows but then you also have the males so you've got different sexed animals on this map as well and you got the calves and you got the bulls and now check this out let's go ahead and just buy one bull there he is tucked in the back look at this big boy 
He is huge compared to the rest of these. You, yeah, these are all babies, but if he had a full-blown female, like a, a full adult-sized female, he is miles bigger than the females. And it's just, and what's awesome about this map as well is you can actually grow. So these little guys here will grow into the next stage and then grow into the next stage. They, they will eventually become adults, but these have their own kind of feeding system. So you have to have milk for your calves in order for them to grow into, into be productive. So it's just one of those next level things. I've said this several times on this uh, top 10, but I'll continue to say that there are so many things that are next level on these maps. This one, it's the animals because this was the first to introduce us. There was another map earlier in the list that that had the same mechanism in place. Bucks County, PA had the same thing, but this one was a flagship. This one led the charge. Now let me go ahead and grab a tractor real quick and we'll start making our way around and talking about all the pros and cons on this map. So we'll grab this one here. And again, if tight spaces are not your thing, this might not be the area for you because it gets really, really tight. And as we drive around, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. The main road network, not so bad, but the farms are very, very tight. But again, the views, the hills, the terrain, the color palette, just everything is gorgeous. You got lots of grass, you've got lots of fields, just, you got everything. You really do have just about everything on this map. This is one of those very well-rounded maps that are just awesome, just absolutely awesome. So, first map with custom uh, animals. Big Pro, gonna lead off with that one. Again, beautiful landscape, beautiful terrain. Love it, love it, love it. You've got, uh, like I mentioned before, the animals, they will grow with time. So if you have a baby, they'll eventually grow into a heifer and the heifer will grow into a, a full-blown cow. It is not just a kind of stagnant, you know, you buy one and then it just stays that forever. It will grow and eventually they'll have babies of their own and those will be babies. They will be the little bitty bitty calves. So it's one of those that they'll just keep re repopulating themselves and re-upping into the next stage, into the next stage, into the next stage. And it's fantastic. It is just such a cool concept to be added into the game. And this is the one that did it. This is the one that started it all. Now again, we're going to go into some of these kind of country roads. Now again, these country roads, even though they're lined with bushes... They've got fencing. There are boundaries on these. So if you're not a, a good driver, be just go slow. Be careful. Because again, tight spaces, tight lanes. You're not going to have huge, huge equipment. You're going to you know, be limited as to what you can kind of handle and deal with at any given time. And then lastly, uh, all around the periphery here, there's a large... Uh, grass area all around the outside of the map here you can see how it's kind of limited but in the north you've got this huge grassy area and let's see we should be able to kind of tuck our way into it on this side over here yeah another little sleep trigger just tucked around here there's multiple farms you can see on the map there all the little colored circles all of those have their own kind of uh, their own kind of feeling to them. They all have different things. Now we might be able to kind of tuck ourselves into this. We might have a, a border here, but I'm not sure. Nope, there we go. So yeah, you can come out here and look at all this grass area. All of this. And again, the nice custom outer edge. We come out to the very periphery of the map. And you can see it just looks like it carries on. You know, you have this kind of bump here of the outer map, but it just looks like it, it's natural. It's actually built to make it look like it's a part of the landscape and not just, you know, plunk down and kind of set and forget kind of thing. But again, nice rolling hills. You got tons and tons of area that you can do and that you can buy. And look at all the 
area that you can purchase out here. It is absolutely massive what you can purchase out here. Just absolutely love it. Now, some negatives and cons on this map. You've got the lack of productions. There's not a lot in the ways of different productions that are available on this map. Oh, and I'm going to have a hard time getting back into the map. So let's go ahead and just do this. Let's fly over. So because of that lack of productions and the kind of inability to have a lot of area that you can kind of build and buy up from, from nothing, there's a lot of these areas where it's already like built. The farms are already built in place and, and whatnot. So to find areas that you're going to have to be able to kind of build up and do stuff with, you're going to basically have to buy fields and then build them up from there. It's going to be very few kind of placeable areas. If we take a look at the map real quick, you can see there's not a lot of placeables. There's a little bit of forestry here in the northwest, and that's about it. That's really about it. So you could, you know, cut down all this land and then make it into something. But outside of that, you're going to be really hard pressed to kind of build and grow with the map. Uh, small starting equipment, but it fits the map. So what I mean by small starting equipment, so you take a look, you don't get a lot, but you don't start out with that big of equipment, but because everything on the map is so small in proportion, it's okay to start out with this kind of smaller equipment. You got the Deutz Far Harvesters, you got the, uh, eh, about smallish trailer, small cedars, small sprayers, small spreaders, slurry tanks, everything's small, but again, appropriate for the map. And then again, big negative in my opinion is the small spaces all along the farm. So let's check out this farm over here. Again, very tight, narrow entrances and exits, very hard to store some things. You got certain things that are just kind of tucked away around, you know, nooks and crannies, and they're all developed with a small footprint in mind. You know, having the smallest amount of space available to be able to kind of maximize, you know, what little space you do have. You know, so we continue to kind of make our way around and whatnot. Again, it's just a lot going on. But here you've got this long driveway that leads into the farm here. You know, they're basically minimizing farm space, the, the actual, you know, usable storage space to maximize the amount of growing space for, you know, production to, to, to kind of utilize the space more towards the fields rather than the farms and yeah i think that's uh yeah i i just i absolutely love this map i love what it brought to oh and that's the other thing too is look at this you've got all these little tractors and telehandlers just random stuff like random bits of equipment that are just kind of driving around the map you know as part of the uh the traffic splines and you got the cool little sound effects like listen to that it's just again next level details 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 the more details the better and again you got the jcb telehandler just trucking around here as well just love it just absolutely love it so yeah that's i think a good reason why this is number three number two alma missouri us by Celebuki. And here we have Alma, Missouri, U.S. And I tell you what, I don't think there's any other map that has such a cool kind of postcard feel. Like you, you look at this and you see the welcome to Alma right there towards the right hand side of the screen. And it's just nice little landscape, subtle terrain. The car is kind of coming and going in the background. It's just very very nice like it, it's very calming and relaxing and, and that's oh i just i love this map celebuki did an amazing job with this map it is i think one of my favorites uh that's come out in quite some time because of the feelings that it invokes in me we'll see as we progress down the road and we see exactly what this map looks like 
the town area that's directly down this road, it just reminds me so much of all small towns that I've just been through. That kind of just small town feeling and, and just everything you get from the American flag lining the streets to the homes that are right on the corners all the way up until you get into the actual town area itself. You got people walking up and down the streets. It's just nice. It's picturesque. It's very, very quiet. And now you start to get into the town area where it's just kind of a little bit built up, but not overly built up. You know, you've got just so much, so much going on. I just absolutely love it. And like I said, it just reminds me of every little small town, especially my small town that I grew up in and that I came from. You know, it just, yeah, I just absolutely love it. Just this is a prime example of art imitating life kind of thing because from what i understand this is actually based off of a real life location and a lot of the buildings are actually based off real buildings real locations Celebuki, the map maker actually went through and like tried to as best as they could recreate things the way that they actually appear in real life and we're going to go ahead and keep going through because the starting farm is still a little ways away from here. We're going to go through the pros and cons, starting with the beautiful landscape. Look at this. Just absolutely stunning. The nice sweeps and undulations, the subtle tones of the colors. You've got basically whites and greens. That's it. A little bit of browns here and there based on, you know, kind of the weeds and stuff that are in the road. But outside of that, it's just very toned down. It's mellow and it's, to me, calming. It's very nice. You got the nice sweep and undulations. You got the kind of lining of the dirt road with the big trenches that will help dissipate and, and clear out water all along the roadway, all along the farmlands, all that. It's just very, very nice. The map feels real. It feels like this is an actual place and, and it is, I mean, it is, but it just feels, it has that, I've never been to Alma, Missouri, so I don't know if this is true to real life. I have nothing but the map maker's word to go off of, but based on just my own knowledge of, you know, the Midwest and, and that kind of general, you know, landscape, this seems right to me, just feels right. The unique fields. There's tons of unique fields in their shapes. You can see number 22 here and just how you know all over the place it is. And it has that very, uh, a grander scale Stone Valley vibe. And what I mean by that is all the, the fields are very, very large for the most part. You do have some smaller ones in and around tucked in here, but you also have these large ones that are just kind of built into you know, into the terrain, into the landscape. And then lastly, we have custom crops, as you can see here, rye, peas, and alfalfa, and custom productions. And just like any Celebuki map, the, a lot of the productions are kind of overlapping, but you have things like ketchup production, popcorn production. You've got, uh, that's the dairy, that's the bakery. Uh, the corn dryer, that's, I think, specific just to this map of Celebuki's. I mean, you've got just so much stuff. You got the pizzeria, you got the uh, tailor shop, and all of them are just customized in some way, shape, or form. And this is the starting farm. You got your sleep trigger off to the right. You've got a bunch of storage, big building storage right here. You got some more uh, storage just tucked away in the back over here. You've got your cow barn and a really nice cow barn right here that kind of joins up with your sheep barn that's right next door off to the side here you've got this kind of downhill slope leading to a slurry tank which i think that is really cool because again they're just that natural kind of feel of using the landscape to build up your farm kind of thing you've got the sheep barn tucked in the back over here we'll go over there in just a second So all the cows are in this big building here, but then you got your sheep that'll roam through the fields over here. You've got a horse pasture just tucked away in the back over here. And just, it all just looks 
absolutely gorgeous. You got your big silos right there with the necessary equipment for it. I mean, you've got tucked away back here. You just got some junk that is just back here for no reason other than it's there. You can see all this junk, but it just, again, it's something that you would see on some farms. You know, just a bunch of old junk that's just piled up over the years. You know, out in the back 40 kind of thing. You've got this nice little pond. Again, more junk. But it, the, what's nice is that junk is removable. A nice little pond that's tucked away back here that you can get water from. Just absolutely fantastic. And again, similar to other uh, maps that have made this list, I can't think of too much to say in the negative against this map. I absolutely think that this is a fantastic map and certainly worth a download. But I think that is why this is number two. And I cannot wait to show you number one. Number one, Frontier by Zero Uito. And here we go, the number one map. In my opinion, my favorite map that has been released up until this point, Frontier. I think this is one of the coolest maps because this map, even though there's this whole outside element of story that is interlaced into this map with the kind of post-apocalyptic feel, it's still a very good example of a farming map. So it, even though there's this very story-driven, very story-heavy uh, kind of throughput in this map, it still doesn't detract from the game itself. There's a lot of maps out there where it tries to tell a story, but it really kind of takes away and detracts from the actual game itself. This one, I don't feel it does that. I feel that this one really does a kind of a service to the kind of creative aspect of Farming Simulator, the, the very creative nature, as well as providing us a, a good solid game to play on, it, 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 or a good solid map to play on. It's just very, very solid. Now, this is the starting farm, as you can see. Very, very small because there's not a lot of area to, to farm off the bat. You can see all the kind of farming area consists of pretty much the southern half of the map. And even a good chunk of it is just kind of whittled out kind of thing. The whole northern part, the very northern part of this is all desert, just wasteland kind of thing. And we'll get out there in just a little bit. But... You start out with your uh, house right here. It is enterable, so you can actually kind of walk around it. And, you know, again, details, 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 details. Very, very important. Silo right here. A lot of your starting equipment. And you don't get a lot of starting equipment for this map. You take a look on here. I mean, you get some, but you don't get a ton. And you do get a bit of starting out uh, product here with lime. You get some more storage equipment right here and your fields. That's it. This is, this is the entire starting farm, nothing else. But what makes this map so special and so unique is behind the walls. That's right, I said walls. For anybody who's not familiar with this map, again, this is like a post-apocalyptic kind of scenario where the city has kind of reclaimed some of the apocalyptic landscape, but the landscape still exists. You know, we're still kind of chugging along behind these walls, and I'll show you the wall in just a second. So you come over in this area, and you can see the wall right there starting to come into view. And you can also see that it's a very highly guarded, highly secure. There's cops running around all over the map. Traffic splines, just like on any Zero Edo map, are just next level. They very much... Ooh, hey, there's a collision right there. You can see, that's the kind of entrance and exit for the main gate. It's just crazy. It's just absolutely nuts. 
but behind the wall it's nice lush and green on the other side just nothing just desert but let's go ahead and go through some of the pros and cons starting with the beautiful landscape and the different terrains that you will experience on this map is incredible considering that it's all done in such a small area you've got the forest area just tucked away here you got the city you got the uh you got the farmlands i mean you got so much kind of built into the into the cake and lining throughout the entire map you can see i'm driving on this kind of rough terrain here that's actually a product that can be picked up if you own the land you can lift you can scoop this stuff up and use it to sell to 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 use in productions and things like that it, it's just it's all over the place and the same things like that outside the wall in the desert there's i think this is dirt and on outside the desert it's sand and again just the the landscape and the topography changes so drastically from place to place in such a small area it's so nice it's so cool in my opinion We'll just keep on coming through here because look at this. This is all just rough, rough terrain. Again, because of the kind of story that's inherent in this map, you have amazing story potential. You can tell such an amazing story if you're a content creator or if you're just playing along to have fun. You can have this kind of be its own narrative in your own mind kind of thing. There are tons of custom productions on this map. So much stuff going on in and around this area. So we've got things like, you can see I'm carrying around the uh, pallets right now. That is, it's in, its, uh, in and of itself, its own product. There are different crops that are available, if I'm not mistaken. Let's still, nope, there no additional crops, but there's just all sorts of different productions that can be utilized for those crops. So we can take a look here. We've got things like, oh, the concrete Brock factory. That's one of them. Fabric factory. There's another. We got the metal and limestone. And so lying around, there's different types of, there are different types of products, just not different types of, uh, like actual, like crop types that you can do. So if we come back here and look down here, these are the custom products that are available. So you got, you know, a custom diesel icon. You've got going down a little bit further. Here we go. So you got soybean oil that's built in UHT milk, canned corn, canned olives, yogurt, tomato sauce, ketchup, pallets, carrots, watermelons, cabbage, so on and so forth. There's tons and tons and tons and tons of different stuff available on this map. And we're just gonna keep on kind of chugging along and taking a look through here. Cause I mean, just, absolutely incredible the amount of stuff that's back here and i'm going at absolute top speed that this truck will take me on this particular train it gets so rough in some places that you just kind of have to chug along and, and hope that you can get through it you know kind of thing some negatives that are on this map and to me as a content creator they are absolutely huge again the details are so up there. I love the details on, on any Zero Edo map because they are just absolutely next level. We passed by the sawmill and you could hear the sawmill just churning in the background, just cutting through and doing work. It's like that everywhere on this map. You get sound and noise all over the place, but because you get sound and noise all over the place, you also get something else that I, cannot stand as a content creator i wish that i could play on this map and do a let's play series i wish i could do that on any zero eight on map but i can't and the reason being is because there's music there's actual copywritten music in the game that i just don't feel comfortable with now look at this this is the desert i was talking about this is just incredible you got that kind of nuclear blast kind of kind of look and feel like I, that's what it looks like to me. It's just a completely devastated, you know, world. You've got some you know life outside the walls, but not much, not much at all. Let's go ahead and go outside here. 
So yeah, the music is just an absolute killer to me personally because it prevents me from doing anything on this map that's recordable where I could actually like produce content for and that's just it, it hurts my heart so badly because this is just an absolutely amazing map and an amazing example of creativity while at the same time still being true to a farming simulator game you know, it does, the, the storyline that is here, the wall, the city behind the wall, the all this, it doesn't detract from it being a farming simulator game. And that's amazing. I love that. The other negative that's on this map, am I going to make it? Yeah. The other negative that's on this map is the small starting farm. The, the starting farm, it's going to take forever to build up and to get the resources necessary to really kind of get everything underway because the fields are kind of expensive for what you're getting. 42,000 for what is that? Uh, you're, you're talking 131,000 per hectare, uh, you know, 103,000 per hectare, 101,000, 116. 109 so on and so forth like it's really really expensive for everything on this map and then you go into some of the bigger fields like this one here and this one has a farm that's or uh yeah a farm that's built into it now it does cover several fields this one large farm but it's almost a million dollars it's it's huge it's a huge investment now this farm here is a bit smaller but still one hundred fifty one thousand dollars it's two hundred thousand dollars per hectare this one is only $100,000 per hectare. You get tons and tons of land, but it costs money. You get forestry areas here where you cut, again, $400,000, $275,000, $700,000. It's expensive. The smallest field is about this area here where you got a little mixture of trees and a field. Again, $45,000. $20,000. This is about the cheapest one you can get outside of your main area. So it's going to, and again, small fields. So you're not going to be able to get a whole lot. You're going to have to work and work and work, and you're going to have to just keep on hustling to be able to make anything on this field, on this particular map, which, I mean, that's the kind of name of the game. You know, work, work, work is the name of the game on Farming Simulator. But there are times where it becomes a bit much. So, yeah, I just, at the end of the day, I absolutely love this map. I think this is an amazing, an amazing map. It's got so much stuff going for it. And the amount of creativity that the player can do is next level. But then you throw into the fact the amount of creativity it took to make this map is just fantastic fantastic and to show the details that i was talking about i'm going to go to this area here this is the kind of crude oil production plant this kind of factory area that's right here in front of me it's massive it's absolutely massive but the amount of details as we pull into this area look at this you've got trucks just kind of lined up all over the place you've got noises you've got just all the running engines of all these semi trucks, the air brakes that are going off. Again, more trucks, more parking, more everything. And just you got construction equipment, you know, that's here. You've got just all sorts of different stuff. And if you take a look, there's a lot of detail that if you were just not doing anything, like if you're, you would never even know that these blade turbines are here. These kind of, you know, but until you come into third person and you're up in the air like this, you would, you would, again, you would just never know this kind of stuff was here. And it, it's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And let's go into the city here and now come out here and just look at all this detail. Look at everything that's going on in just this one screen. You got all these people walking around the traffic splines, the, the, just the bowling alleys the, uh, or that's not the bowling alley. I'm sorry. That's a bakery. Uh, you've got the, I mean, just, again, just so much stuff going on and going around. It's just inc 
incredible. You know, you got the hotel. You got the gravel. Look at all the gravel that's on top of the roof there. That kind of insulating gravel. That's just, that's awesome. Just little details that you don't think of that are here. Because this is like, this is next level stuff. Donation center. And what's really cool is look at this. All the graffiti. You know, never give up. But again, there's just so much that you can do with this particular map. You know, it got all the sirens. It's just, it's just again, just incredible. Incredible. When everything's said and done, just absolutely love this map. I think this is just next level kind of stuff. You, know, you come in here. This area, I think, is just not... You're not supposed to actually be in here, but it is what it is. Um, this is more just kind of decorations. Yeah, because this is all blocked off. You're not supposed to be able to, you know, take traffic through here. But, yeah, it, it just... Let's get away from all the sirens. But, yeah, it, it just absolutely, absolutely love it. And you look at this grocery store. You got tons of people coming in and out. You got a huge full parking lot here. You know, you can deliver all your items here into the back. Just... It just it's fantastic it's absolutely fantastic there's just so much going on and so many details but if you're just flying through and you're not really paying attention you're just going to miss it like look at this the little muffin on top of the on top of the uh, bakery right here just little things like that it's just again next level stuff but because of how everything's kind of laid out and how everything works on this particular map and in particular a lot of zero EO maps Unfortunately, I just I will not ever be able to to do a let's play series on this. This is going to be for personal use only for me. But that's the 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 life I lead as a content creator. <laughs> Anyways, that is why this one's number one on the list, and I think that we finished this off real strong. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, top 10 video of my favorite maps this is kind of the number two of the series we can, will continue to put out new top 10s as new maps become available as new uh new information gets released as updates kind of get pushed out there and and things change you know perfect example uh lands of la mancha is the very first let's play series i've ever done on this channel it was a night and day difference between what i started out with you know way back then to what that map is now there's the starting far is next level so if new maps become available if new updates become available they will be able to be on further and further either iterations of the top 10 lists so again i hope you enjoyed this list if you did please show me by liking sharing subscribing following commenting doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing that shows you're engaged with this channel and join the content and that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.